everyone, we are the Go Paris Saclay team and today we are very happy to present to you our project about endometriosis detection named Endosic. In this video, we want to talk with you about a range of important areas in our project. We felt it was necessary to address this very important and often underestimated message after one other of our team member told us she's been recently diagnosed with endometriosis. Endometriosis is gynecological pathology whose prevalence in the world population is estimated to be around 10% of women of childbirthing age. In addition to women, LGBT plus or intersex persons with female reproductive organs can also suffer from endometriosis. All through, there are several theories about the origin of the disease. It is accepted that the disease began with the proliferation of the tissue similar to that of the uterine lining outside of the uterus. The most common effect of the pathology on her are pain, increased menstruation, heavy menstruation, bleeding, fatigue, pain, and decreased fertility. Endometriosis is commonly misdiagnosed and women often report being incorrectly told their systems are trivial or normal. In fact, there is a general lack of knowledge about the endometriosis among primary care physicians. Half of general health care providers that survived were unable to name three symptoms of endometriosis. We saw also the gender, race, and ethical data gaps. Moreover, laparoscopy as surgical method is still used for diagnosis even through is not the standard. Nowadays, diagnosis is based on the MRI and vaginal echography, but there are still several difficulties related to the interpretation of these images. When we choose our project, we wanted to know the stakes involved in the development of a synthetic biology project. We therefore undertook to contact and interview a French military expert working on a military research laboratory developing a detection and therapeutic countermeasures in the event of unintentional and accidental biological threats. Following this exchange and this awareness, we decided to stay and choose a project having a utility in the chain of care of a person suffering from a disease. During the development of the experimental design of the Endosic project, we decided to develop a test in which the end users will not have to deal with genetically modified microorganisms, but only with microRNA, proteins and buffers whose risks are measured and low or non-existent for the health of the manipulators. The CAS system for RNA's detection. CRISPR-Cas systems are the adaptive immune system of prokaryotes. They allow bacteria and archaea to keep a trace in their genome of the phage they encountered and to specifically degrade their genetic material in case of infection. This system, the most famous of which is CRISPR-Cas9, are now increasingly studied for their usefulness in genome editing and as diagnostic tools in biotechnology, agri-food, and health. Most recently, the RNA cleaving protein Cas14A was used for miRNA detection. Cas14A is a DNA dependent RNAs from the gram negative bacterium Leptotrichia buccalis, belonging to the Cas4 CRISPR Cas system. Its activation by hybridization of the CRISPR RNA, with which it is associated with its complementary single stranded RNA, allows it to cleave any single stranded RNA in a non specific manner. This phenomenon is called collateral activity. This collateral activity allows the use of this protein for the detection of RNAs using a fluorescent single-stranded RNA reporter. In the same way, Cas14A1 is another little Cas protein coming from Archaeus presenting a non-specific DNA-dependent DNAs activity, allowing its use for DNA detection. To increase test sensitivity, most Cas14 dependent miRNA detection systems rely on target amplification by reverse transcription, recombinase, polymerase amplification. In this project, Team IGM Go Power Secly 2021 will test the signaling cascade using Cas14A and Cas14A1 in order to increase detection sensitivity in the absence of target amplification, inspired by the cascade CRISPR Cas developed by Shaw at all in 2021. Our test will rely on the ability of the two Cas proteins to cleave different nucleic acids upon association with the target miRNA with the CRISPR RNA. The collateral activity of Cas14A 
will cut the phosphodiester bond between the two uracil in the loop of a stable hairpin, STHB. The resulting duplex structure can interact with Cas14A1 through strand displacement with the single guide RNA, sgRNA. The resulting activated Cas14A1 nuclease can cleave a SSDNA probe linked to a fluorophore and a quencher, thereby releasing a fluorescence signal that could be measured by a smartphone-based device. Two mRNAs were chosen to be detected for the significance of the difference in their expression in the serum of women with endometriosis compared to healthy women, MIR-125B-5P and MIR-3613-5P. Concentration of the mRNA MIR-125B-5P was greatly increased in the serum of women suffering from endometriosis compared to unaffected women while that of MIR-3613-5P -E was reduced. The dual DNA RNA molecule stable hairpin, called STHP, was synthesized by Eurofins. Gene blocks or complementary primers synthesized by IDT were used to generate DSDNA fragments that served as template for the RNA synthesis using the T7 Ripomax Expert Kit from Promega. RNAs were further purified with Promega Relia Prep columns and checked by electrophoresis on urea acrylamide gels. Reporter probes for cast protein activity with fluorophore, FAM, and quencher BHQ1 were ordered at Eurofins. For the production of Cas14A and Cas14A1, E. coli Rosetta strain was transformed with two plasmids coding either Cas14A or Cas14A1 ordered from AdGene. Following the protein production, bacteria were released by sonication. The proteins carrying his tag were purified using nickel columns and digested with proteas in order to remove the histidine tags and solubilization domains they carry. Cas14A and Cas14A1 were then purified by FPLC on heparin column using a gradient using two solutions. Finally, a millipore centrifugal device was used to concentrate the proteins which were then analyzed by SDS page and kumasite staining. In order to test their ability to allow the detection of our mRNAs independently of each other, Cas14A and Cas14A1 were first tested separately. Each was pre-incubated with its respective regulatory RNA and then incubated with mRNA for Cas14A and an SSDNA activator for Cas14A1 and an SSRNA or SSDNA recorder. The pre-incubation times and concentration of the regulatory RNAs and mRNAs were varied to determine the optimal detection conditions. Once these final conditions were found, we proceeded with the final cascade reaction. Results We were able to produce both proteins, but only Cas13A could be stripped of its tags and solubilization domains. If the tests, aiming to detect our mRNAs of interest, thanks to Cas14A, were conclusive, with a detection limit of 20 nanomoles of mRNAs, those using Cas14A1 did not allow to conclude to a real activity of the protein in the presence of its activator. Furthermore, and probably due to the non-activity of Cas14A1, no activity indicating successful detection was measured with the full cascade experiment. However, even if we did not succeed in obtaining a complete functional cascade, probably because of the tags and solubilization domains of Cas14A1 that would have hindered its activation, we were able to detect our mRNAs of interest using Cas14A alone. Thus, the next steps will be to retry the experiment using another passmid encoding a Cas14A1 whose tags and solubilization domains would be easier to remove. 
in our project, we addressed the need for diagnostic test for endometriosis by using microRNA as biomarker. Since a good biomarker should have high specificity and sensitivity to detect a certain condition, we have decided to analyze the performance of our model through rock curves, which plot the sensitivity against one minus of the specificity of given classifier. Since finding a diagnosis test in the same as classifying as individual of having the disease or not, we can see that to find the test, we can implement the reality of binary classification problem in function of some potential biomarkers that can address by using well-known machine learning algorithms. The best scores have been reached when we have combined the Pearson coloration method followed by feature rescue elimination which has given us by a subset on only free myocarnae as potential biomarker. Given the challenge, we saw greater precision in our results. We work on on a way to assess the probability of two microRNAs sticking together. To do this, we developed a comprehensive computer program with easy-to-use interface. This allow, uh, allows us to predict their percentage change of sticking together if its percentage is high for different position in the microRNA space. We have added an option to calculate the percentage change of the microRNA for forming a stem loop structure. This is to avoid selecting microRNA that would be unfavorable to detection in a rapid blue test. In order to allow a maximum people to diagnose themselves in the case of impossibility to consult with the complement health professional, we decided to design and construct a feasible fluorimeter uh, that costs less than 20 euros. The, from the cardboard, the lens, cheap laser pointer, mirrors, and the one fluorimeter cubit. In addition, we have developed an application to Android app uh, to measure fluorescence directly from the smartphone, and uh, we get the tutorial with explanation how to use it. Education is one of the most important facets of our project. However, we had to start with the idea that information and awareness about endometriosis was a challenge for several reasons. The reluctance of parents to talk to their children about menstruation, the taboo on menstruation in general, on body education are some examples. We had to find a playful and accessible way to make people, and especially young people, aware of our cause. Often, we don't feel concerned by a cause. Because of that, we decided to create a video game. This method was well received by children and parents alike. We were able to meet directly with a few hundred people who have or have not adopted our method, and it was very interesting to get feedback. The game is set in a world similar to ours, where uteruses are disappearing and Detective Coley sets out to find them. The social dimension is tackled through the disappearances. The patients have testified about a certain difficulty in being understood by the medical profession or their entourage. Moreover, helping the general public to apprehend and understand the issues related to research and scientific discoveries is a major challenge for contemporary societies, especially when the issue addressed could have a real social impact, as in the case of endometriosis and its detection. In order to make our project known and to establish a link with different audiences, we participated in workshops and organized conferences. On May 18, 2021, we went to the Lycée Louis Le Grand, where we presented our project to high school and preparatory class students. During another event, the Science Festival on October 3 and 4, 2021, we presented our project in the form of a conference. The Science Festival is an event that allows the general public to get a glimpse of what science really is and to show new technologies to a varied public. In order to make sure that our information could be easily disseminated to a large number of people due to our committed project, we insisted on inclusive tools, especially in terms of IT tools. We have implemented voice assistance on the wiki, as well as the possibility to change languages and colors. We made the game accessible on computers and mobile phones. We have done some research on the LGBT plus inclusion so that no one feels left out. As endometriosis is often said to be a woman's disease, but it is also a disease of people born female and we want to make sure nobody forgets it. We have made available on the wiki links to places where you can discuss endometriosis if you feel like talking about it. A science project involves much more than laboratory manipulations. 
and finding purely biological solutions for a given problem. Therefore, we thought it was necessary to involve a various number of interlocutors in this research, whom we chose because they were essential for a good understanding of the different issues involved. Obstetricians and gynecologists, patients and members of patients' associations exchanged with us and allowed us to orient the project towards serological tests involving biomarkers. But above all, during these exchanges, different participants helped us to raise problems that we had not thought of. Mainly that of determining whether the test should be carried out as a part of diagnosis or a screening tool. Human practices allowed us to anchor our endosic project to the psychological daily life of the patient that we observed through their testimonies, confidences, but also through their stories on social networks. It seemed essential to us that these people, mostly women but also people in transition, reappropriate the discourse around this disease so we could look at the disease from the perspective of those first affected. We also made some investigation on how endometriosis was known. This survey tends to prove that there is still a significant part of people that didn't hear about endometriosis and even a more important part heard about it but didn't know what it was. Whether it is due to a lack of access to information or to a different culture in the country, it is clear that prevention around endometriosis is still lacking. Moreover, our research showed that even in developed countries like France, endometriosis is poorly treated in medical education. Indeed, we have found that the expertise around this disease is rare and defective. This is verified by different testimonies where affected persons tell us about medical errancy regarding their cases. Among those, a common idea comes up. If I hadn't taken matters into my own hands, I could have waited a lot longer. This is why we try to provide a suitable solution for them. Now let's imagine Andosic implemented in the real world. How could we imagine it? Actually, Andosic would be a diagnosis tool and not a screening test. Moreover, everyone should be able to have access to it after a medical appointment and an exchange with a gynecologist who could be able to determine if a test should be considered, or after using artificial intelligence tools, for example. This could really assist experts when they are struggling to interpret imagery, for instance. Also, we imagine our project in parallel with prevention campaigns in developing countries, but also intervention in already developed ones about developing a project with your team. It's also about collaborating with other teams from all around the world. Actually, iGEM is a multicultural adventure, and sometimes a collaboration can lead to stronger bonds, partnerships. That's what happened for us with iGEM Mood. We exchanged together about our project, and realized by that both of them contained ethical dilemmas. Not taking this notion into account was, according to us, missing something. So we continued these questionings and drawing our forces. That's how IGEX is born. We also collaborated with the ICER Kolkata team. Indeed, our two teams working on microRNA exchanged our sequences in order to test the ability of our respective detection methods to detect a microRNA from the other team. We have been involved in many other great collaborations in addition to the ones that we have mentioned here. In conclusion, our project aimed to develop a new tool for the detection of micro RNAs, promising markers for many diseases using a reaction cascade between two cas proteins. To facilitate the determination of microRNAs to be detected for a disease and the accessibility to a cheap detection material, our team developed a software and a model, a protocol for the construction of homemade fluorometer and a fluorescence measurement application, and a protocol for um, the fluorescence interpretation of the measurements. The disease to be detected that we decided to treat his endometriosis, a disabling gynecological pathology, whose um, diagnosis is too long today. Um, in order to uh, make maximum of people aware of this disease and of our project, 
we have participated in many collaboration and events directly or indirectly uh, linked to the iGEM community. And we have developed a video game accessible to children and adults. And all the results of our manipulation and all the resources we created are also available on the wiki site designed to be accessible for um, a maximum of people. So that was the video.